Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> I'd like to call this Wednesday meeting of February the 6th of the Claremont County Board of Commissioners to order. Before we get started, I'd like to <clears throat> read a statement here concerning the recent events that we've had in the county, if that's okay with the regular other board members. Sure. Yeah. On Saturday, February 2nd, Deputy Nick DeRose and Deputy William Brewer responded, along with the Claremont County Special Response Team, to a call for help from a 23-year-old man. The two deputies sustained gunshot wounds as a result of their commitment to serve and protect the citizens of Claremont County. Lieutenant DeRose was later treated and released from the hospital, returning to work later that same day. Deputy LaRose was shot twice, once in the lower leg and another that struck his utility belt and protective vest, preventing a life-threatening injury. He is a true testament to the resolve of the, of the department. Detective William Brewer sustained life-ending injuries as a result of his commitment to serve. I pray that Lieutenant DeRose has a speedy recovery. Today, this Board of Claremont County Commissioners honors and mourns the loss of Detective William Brewer of the Claremont County Sheriff's Office. On behalf of this board, we extend our deepest condolences to Bill's family and thank him, thank them for sharing him with us. Bill and Nick spent over 20 years protecting and helping the citizens of Claremont County. On that Saturday, Bill, along with his partner, Lieutenant Nick DeRose, answered a call for help whereby Bill and Nick sustained gunshot injuries. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for his friend. Bill and Nick's selfless courage goes well beyond God's word in that they both were willing to lay down their lives for a man they didn't even know. Bill gave his life that evening in an effort to help. William Brewer was that kind of guy. Bill was a son, a brother, a husband, a dad, a beloved family member. He leaves behind his loving wife, Jamie, his beloved son, Braxton, his brother, Michael, his parents, Bill and Angie, his in-laws, his nieces, his nephews, and his Claremont County deputy family, and all the citizens of Claremont County that he took an oath to protect. There are only a few professions that require a man to commit his life to the protection of others. Bill was a Claremont County deputy. Once a deputy, always a deputy. To the 200,000 residents of Claremont County, Bill will always be our deputy. To Bill's wife and son, there are no words that I can speak to answer the question, why such a tragedy as this is allowed to happen? For God's plan is so vast that even if he were to show it to us, we wouldn't understand it. Rest assured that there are two people that now understand his plan, and one of them is Bill. May God comfort you in this time of loss. Our prayers are with you all. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. We'll move forward with the agenda. <clears throat> Item number B, approval of the regular session minutes of January 30th, 2019. I had a chance to review those and I agree, so I make a motion we approve the minutes of January 30th. I have reviewed them also and I'll second that motion. It's been moved and seconded. Judy? Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Mrs. Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Painter? Yes. Item number C, public participation. If there's anyone here today in attendance that would like to participate in this time of public participation, please do so by moving forward to the podium. State your name and your address. Seeing none, I'll close the public participation and move on with item D. 
Item D is the consent agenda. It's been prepared for us. <clears throat> the board's had a time to look it over and approve it. Board members, is, are there any items that you would like to pull from the consent agenda to be further discussed? Not at this time. Therefore, hearing none, I'll ask for a motion to approve the consent agenda as written. I'll make that motion. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further conversation or discussion? Judy. Mrs. Corcoran. Yes. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Mr. Painter. Yes. Item number E, we'll move to the non-consent agenda. Non-consent starts on page six with item number 11. Board of County Commissioners, resolution number 012-19, payment of bills. It's a recommendation that the Board of County Commissioners adopt resolution 012-19, resolving to approve payment to vendors in the amount of $1,208,199.36. This includes a BCC approval, invoice reports for checks dated February 6, 2019, BCC directed prepaid invoices, vendor invoices, items paid by fund and check, date range report, and or procurement card transactions. <clears throat> Presented by the county auditor on 2-4-2019 and further authorizing the county auditor to issue warrants for the same pursuant to section 319 Point one six of the Ohio Revised Code. Do I have a motion? So moved. A second. Been moved and second. Any conversation? Judy, roll call. Humphrey. Aye. Mrs. Corcoran. Yes. Mr. Payne. Yes. Item number twelve. Good morning. I'm Lyle Bloom, director with the Claremont County Water Resources Department. And item number twelve is a recommendation to award the bids and execute the contracts for the supply and delivery of water meters and or transmitter unit, units pursuant to the specifications to CORE and Maine out of Batavia, Ohio for bid items one, three, and four and to Badger Meter Incorporated out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin for bid items two, for bid item number two. This is for the lowest and best bids received on December 13th, 2018 at the item price as outlined uh, for total estimated cost of $84,576.50, effective for the period of February 6, 2019 through February 5th, 2021, and an option to renew for an additional one-year period uh, there and after upon the same terms and conditions, pursuant to and compliance with the terms and conditions set forth therein and the award of bid therefore. So core in Maine is the, the low bidder for um, bid item one, which is the 5 eighths by 3 quarter uh, positive displacement meters as our residential meters. Uh, bid item three are compound meters for sizes three inch through eight inch. And bid item four is the transmitter units. Um, Core and Maine is the local uh, supplier for the census uh, water meters and the census transmitter units, which um, work with our current uh, advanced metering infrastructure system. And their total amount was $75,241.50. And then Badger Meter Incorporated is the low bidder for bid item number two, which is the one inch, one and a half inch, and two inch positive displacement meters. And their total amount is $9,335. Board members, you've heard the reading of item number 12. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Judy. Mrs. Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Mr. Painter? Yes. <clears throat> item 13. Item 13 is a recommendation to execute a contract for professional services between the Board of County Commissioners of Claremont County and Hazen and Sawyer out of Cincinnati, Ohio. This is relative to the preliminary design of the Arrowhead Wastewater Treatment Plant and Elimination Project located in Miami Township in accordance with a consultant's proposal dated December 28, 2018. And is identified as Exhibit A, which is attached there too, uh, with the consultant's proposal. Oh, I'm sorry which is attached thereto and made a part thereof for a total estimated amount not to exceed $109,940 with said services to be completed within 165 consecutive calendar days upon issuance of a written notice to proceed from the Claremont County Water Resource Department. And this is exclusive of county review time and pursuant to the release and contingent upon the release of the uh, purchase order. So this is for the elimination of the Arrowhead wastewater treatment plant that was installed in 1972 was a small package plant originally installed just to serve the Arrowhead um, apartments. It also provides sanitary sewer service to 
a small street off of Branch Hill Guinea called Hollow Lane. Um, this portion of the contract will look at different alternatives to either extend gravity sewer or pump and extend gravity sewer and, and a lift station, um, but ultimately to convey the wastewater that currently goes to Arrowhead to the um, Warch Corner Regional Wastewater Treatment Plant. You've heard the reading of item number 13. Do I have a motion? So moved. A second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Judy. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Mrs. Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Painter? Yes. Item 14. Thanks, Lyle. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Doug Royer with the Claremont County Engineer's Office. Number 14 is a recommendation of Pat Munger, County Engineer, with the concurrence of Tom Igo, County Administrator, to accept and execute the annual County Highway System Mileage Certification for the County of Claremont, Ohio, for County Year 2018, certifying the total eligible number of miles for Claremont County to be 385.324 as of December 31st, 2018, pursuant to and compliance with Section 4501.04 of the Ohio Revised Code. I'll make that motion. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Judy. Mrs. Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Mr. Painter? Yes. Item 15. Item 15 is a recommendation of Pat Munger, County Engineer, concurrence of Tom Igo, County Administrator, to execute record plot number 629 3116 for the replot of lots in the following subdivision located in Pierce Township. This is for Locust Lake subdivision, and it is a replot of lot numbers 118 through 134 and 137 through 138. And it's to create new lot number 118A. Heard the reading of 15. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further conversation? Roll call, Judy. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Mrs. Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Painter? Yes. Item 16. Item number 16 is a recommendation of Pat Munger, County Engineer, with concurrence of Tom Igo, County Administrator, to execute record plot number 629 3117. For the replat of lots in the following subdivision located within Union Township, this is the Schaufer subdivision. It's a replat of lot numbers 12 and 13, and it is to create a new lot number 12A. You've heard the reading of item number 16. Any further conversation or discussion? I'll Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Judy, roll call. Mrs. Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. <clears throat> Painter? Yes. Item 17. Item 17 is a recommendation of Pat Munger, County Engineer, with concurrence of Tom Igo, County Administrator, to execute record plot number 629 3118 for the replat of a lot in the following subdivision located in Union Township. It's for Green Valley subdivision. It's a replat of lot number 93. It is to create a new permanent highway easement and a temporary construction easement. Heard the reading of item number 17. Do I have a motion? So moved. A second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Judy. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Mrs. Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Painter? Yes. Item 18. Number 18 is recommendation of Pat Munger, County Engineer, concurrence of time I, I go County Administrator to execute record plot number 629-3119 for the replat of a lot in the following subdivision located in Union Township. This is for Willowbrook subdivision section four. It's a replat of lot number 159 to create a permanent and temporary construction easement. You've heard the reading of item number 18. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any further conversation or discussion? Judy? Mrs. Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Mr. Painter? Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. Item number 19. Good morning, Adele Evans, Assistant Director of Community and Economic Development. Item 19 is an acknowledgement of the resignation of a member of the Claremont County Planning Commission that the Board of County Commissioners resolved to acknowledge the resignation of Richard Hoffman, 1160 State Route 28, Milford, Ohio, from the Claremont County Planning Commission, effective January 28, 2019, and for whose term thereon as an at-large member was for the period of March 31st, 2017 through March 30th of 2020, pursuant to and in compliance with section 713.22 of the Ohio Revised Code. Staff will be advertising on social media and our website um, to request applications to fill this vacancy. Board, you've heard the reading of item number 19. Do I have a motion? So moved. A second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further conversation or discussion? <clears throat> I understand Mr. Hoffman has served on 
that board for quite some time. Is that correct? That this this uh, term that he is resigning from is not his first term. No, it's not. No, he has uh, served on the the planning commission um, for several years. Lots of years. Yep. I, I'll Good be, man. On behalf of the board, I'd like to thank him for his continued service and uh, wish him well in his endeavors. Judy, roll call. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Mrs. Corcoran. Yes. Mr. Painter. Yes. Item 20. I'm in receipt of a copy of a letter of appointment from <clears throat> County Commissioner Claire B. Corcoran, a relative to her designated alternate to serve on the Claremont County Planning Commission pursuant to and in compliance with Section 7. 13.22a of the Ohio Revised Code, and her selection is Richard Hoffman. There's a good reason. <laughs> Wasn't it? You've heard the reading of item number 20. Do I have a motion? Um, actually, it will be a let the record show based on is the terminology, so um, okay. we're ready. We're ready with that. But okay. <laughs> then I ask that. I'm sorry. This board acknowledges that the record will show this um, this acknowledgement made by uh, Claire to appoint Richard Hoffman. It will indeed. Okay. Very good. All right. Item number 21. Good morning. Item 21 is our resolution to authorize the purchase of motor vehicles for this year. Uh, we have a recommendation to declare the necessity to purchase 28 new motor vehicles. These will be as additions or replacements to the existing fleet for the county juvenile court, uh, the county sheriff, the county engineer, the facilities management department, the county water resources department, and the solid waste district. There, right now, we have an estimated cost of one million four hundred ninety-nine thousand dollars from uh, four different funds that will purchase these vehicles. This is about a ten percent replacement in our vehicles if we back out the ones that we're leasing. So it's just, it's just under a 10% replacement. We do have some high dollar value vehicles again in here. We have two dump trucks for the engineer's office and a large, um, we call it the CCTV. It's the TV truck for water resources in order to monitor and evaluate the uh, sewer collection sure. system. Okay. You've heard the reading of item number 21. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Second. And moved and seconded. Is there any further conversation or discussion? Judy? Mrs. Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Mr. Painter? Yes. Item 22. Management and budget. Item 22 is a recommendation of the county auditor and OMB to reestablish the special revenue fund, uh, the special elections fund, to accumulate the revenue paid by political subdivisions for the cost of preparing and conducting special elections. It was previously established in February of 2017 and rescinded in August of 2017, and that's in pursuant to Section 350117I, 2A, and 2B. Currently, the way the legislature set that fund up uh, in order for the money to be returned to the general fund after it's accumulated, the fund must be rescinded. So every time there's special elections, we have to go through the steps of reestablishing it. Okay. Glad you explained. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> that was going to be my first question. Was <laughs> why, why did we? You've heard the reading of item number 22. Do I have a motion? So moved. It's been moved. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further conversation or discussion? Judy. Mr. Hump. Aye. Mrs. Corcoran. Yes. Mr. Painter. Yes. Item number 23. The board is in receipt of a professional services contract with the law firm of Isaac Wiles, Burke Holder, and Teeter, LLC, to represent the Board of County Commissioners in its official capacity and to advise it on legal matters during calendar year 2019 in and as it relates to Chapter 149 of the Ohio Revised Code, entitled Documents, Reports, and Records. And this uh, motion has been prepared to resolve to authorize Thomas J. Eichel, the county administrator, to execute the aforestated professional services contract um, pursuant to and in compliance with Section 30909C of the Ohio Revised Code and the terms and conditions set forth therein with the total compensation for the attorney's fees and costs associated therewith to be paid uh, in concert with 
the uh, four stated statute and the initial work requested herewith not to exceed five thousand um, dollars there uh, was some tweaks to article one um, basically um, identifying specifically um, what and how it would be done and we have the approval of the uh, uh, chief assistant prosecuting attorney you've heard the reading of item number 23 do I have a motion I will make that motion second been moved and second any further conversation or discussion roll call Judy Mrs. Corcoran yes Mr. Humphrey aye Mr. Painter yes <clears throat> Are we going to address add-ons after? Oh, we can do that now if you'd like to. Well, we'll go right ahead and do it then. We have four add-ons. The first is a disposition of bids from community and economic development. I don't know if the board wants to consider all these four as add-ons at once, and then we'll present them individually. Let me, um, let me do this. Board, you see that you have four add-ons here. Um, I think we should consider them separately we will we will I just want to uh, add them to I'm asking to add them to the agenda do I have a motion to add them to the agenda so moved a second it's been moved and it's been seconded any further conversation or discussion Judy roll call Mr. Humphrey hi Mrs. Corcoran yes Mr. Painter yes four add-ons have been added to the agenda Tom if you want to take them one at a time sure Sherry Smart, Community and Economic Development. I have a recommendation of Andy Kutka, Department of Community and Economic Development, with the concurrence of Suki Sheets, Assistant County Administrator, to approve a request to extend the expiration date for the disposition of bids received on December 13, 2018, for project number 2017 03 relative to the Wayne Township. Community Center Phase 3 project in concert with the Claremont County Community Development Block Grant Program for fiscal year 2017 for an additional 30 days from Tuesday, February 12th, 2019 until Wednesday, March 13th, 2019 in compliance with Section 153.12 of the Ohio Revised Code. This is to provide additional time to review the contract documents. You've heard the reading of the add-on. Do I have a motion? So moved. A second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Judy. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Mrs. Corcoran. Yes. Mr. Painter. Yes. Thanks, Sherry. Uh, the next add-on is facilities, a determination of real and present emergency. Wade. Morning. Morning. This resolution is uh, one that asks that the Board of County Commissioners resolve to number one, determine that there is real and present emergency exists pursuant to and in compliance with section 307.86A2 of the Ohio Revised Code, inasmuch as on Friday, February 1st, 2019, the dry sprinkler system at the Claremont County Municipal Court facility failed, resulting in physical disaster to the wall, ceiling, insulation, carpet, furniture, and other structures and appurtenances thereby impeding the current operations of the Claremont County Municipal Court. And to two, authorize Mr. Thomas J. Eigel, County Administrator, to execute for and on behalf of the Board of County Commissioners all contracts required for the repairs and or replacements necessary for the full restoration thereof and subsequent thereto, all such contracts shall be presented to the Board of County Commissioners for acknowledgement and ratification of execution accordingly. Um, just a quick overview of uh, the situation. We did have a dry system fail. Uh, several days prior, we had minus seven degrees. Um, the failure happened sometime in that time period. Obviously, the water got up into the attic, which is typically a dry system, no water, um, froze, and then Friday when temperatures exceeded uh, 38 degrees, they burst. Um, there are three courtrooms affected, starting with A being the worst one. That is a civil courtroom, fortunately not used um, very much, but that doesn't matter. Um, our efforts started at about 1.39 p.m. that afternoon, and by Monday morning, they could have had court in courtrooms B and C. They elected to close. Um, as of yesterday morning, both of those courtrooms were open and fully restored. All electronics, flooring, everything is back to normal. Um, the main area of concern right now is the civil courtroom. That is courtroom A. We already have our contractors giving us estimates and we'll be working on contracts immediately. We anticipate that sometime 
before Friday this week, the company that's in there doing the restoration will clear us to start construction, and that would be re-insulating, re-drop sealing, uh, re-drywalling. Um, there are some furniture issues that we're working on, but I'd like to thank the Joint EMS Fire personally because seven firefighters stayed with us the whole time. The whole time. It's something I haven't seen in a long, long time, but uh, they weren't going to leave until we could physically secure the building. And I, I want to thank all the other people that stayed. Um, that central joint. Central joint, Mr. Roy Short, Mr. Kevin Riley. I have since, on behalf of the board, at my discretion, sent them a letter of appreciation, um, acknowledging that we were very, very, very appreciative of all of their efforts. So, um, right now, if we get clearance for um, the water levels being below 16% and relative humidity being below 60%, our contractors are on standby, and seven to ten days we'll have that uh, back up and running. However, there is some electronic um, stuff that is going to have to be replaced. That may take a long, longer period of time, but our efforts can be done in seven to ten days from this date. I've experienced this before. I know you have. When I was at Miami Township trustee, we had a fire station that had the same problem. Are there ways to put alarms on so we would be notified if Absolutely. the pressure dropped? Yeah, we do have pressure uh, drops. Those alarms engaged when the flow started. The main concern, and I've been working with Silco Fire Protection, our, co our contractor in this, they've been there every day with me because I'm not satisfied with the fact that you, when this happens and you know you don't want it to happen again, yes. so you're checking, double checking. In fact, tomorrow morning starting at 8, I have uh, pressurized testing of the entire system. I'm going to put 200 pound PSI in a dry system and their technicians are going to be in the attic listening for leaks. Um, I want to be absolutely sure before we re-engage. We've been in fire watch since Friday night um, with the assistance of county sheriff, the corrections officers, our staff. I, I just How many other buildings do we have that have dry systems? Seven. Okay. Seven. And, we, and if we, get all, we figure out a way to alarm them, we'll do that to all seven. Yeah, I'm thinking that we're going to have uh, two additional alarms uh, on them. We have flow switches and tamper switches now. But I need a low flow switch, which covers the backup. Um, I know I know you're probably familiar with that, and also a sight glass with a moisture detector. So if small amounts get up into yep. the riser, it will throw an alarm. I, I this has been a miserable situation, but in light of everything else, yeah. our problems were no not a big deal. I, I also have to share with you that at about 6:15 p.m. on Friday, in the midst of the cleanup and all. Um, Detective Brewer came to the municipal court and asked if I needed help. That's the kind of guy he was. Um, he was willing to stay um, and help and do whatever he could. He was one of my first trustee officers, um, so we're very, very familiar with the ethics and the type of person he was. I wanted to share that. That's I haven't shared that with many Appreciate people, that. but Thank you. Uh, he just showed up. You bet. So anyway. You've heard, board, you've heard the reading of the add on to resolve to determine that a real and present emergency exists in compliance with section 307.86 of the Ohio Revised Code. <clears throat> Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Judy. Mrs. Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Mr. Painter? Yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. We have we have an add-on add -on for the Office of Management and Budget. We do. Supplemental appropriation related to the uh, motion that Wade just read. Okay. The uh, supplemental appropriation is being requested for the risk management department within the general fund to place $100,000 in other expenses to cover any of the repairs for the municipal court building and authorize the auditor to put that into the ledger and then we'll get purchase orders as the contracts are. Okay. Board, you've heard the recommendation for the Office of Management and Budget for, for risk allocation. Do I have a motion? So moved. A second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further conversation or discussion? Judy? Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Corcoran? Yes. Hainer? Yes. And the last one is to close the office? Okay. 
The Board of Claremont County resolution here is that the Board of County Commissioners resolve to close the office of the Board of County Commissioners and the offices of those departments under the jurisdiction of the Board of County Commissioners on Friday, February 8th, 2019, between the hours of 8 a.m. and 4.30 p.m., in recognition of the ultimate sacrifice in the line of duty of Detective William Brewer on Saturday, February 2nd, 2019, in order to provide those Claremont County employees the opportunity to participate in the ceremonies and services and commemorate and celebrate his life and to further to authorize those department heads whose operations and services require their departments to remain open to the public, the discretion to allow those employees who sustain those operations or services on that day, the opportunity to participate in the ceremonies and services accordingly. Do I have a motion? I make that motion. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Judy, roll call. Mrs. Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Mr. Painter? Yes. <clears throat> Is there anything further to come before the board? We will Second. move to item F. Executive session pursuant to section 121.22G1. G3 and G4 of the Ohio Revised Code to one, consider the appointment, employment, or compensation of one or more public employee, two, to confer with the prosecuting attorney regarding pending or intimate litiga litigation, three, to prepare for, conduct, and review negotiations or bargaining sessions with public employees concerning their compensation or other terms and conditions of their employment. Do I have a motion? So moved. I'll second. It's been moved and second. Judy, roll call. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Mrs. Corcoran. I'm sorry. What? Mrs. Corcoran. Yes. Sorry. Vayner. Yes. It's covered. Okay. We have therefore moved into executive session. We will return. We are back from executive session. There were no decisions made. Is there anything further to come before this Board of Claremont County Commissioners? Yes, sir. Well, with that, I will ask for a motion to adjourn this meeting. I'll make that motion. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Roll call, please. Mrs. Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Mr. Painter? Yes. <clears throat> this concludes our meeting for February the 6th, 2019. Have a great week, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.